I know what it's like to lose. To feel so desperately that you're right, yet to fail nonetheless. It's frightening. It turns your legs to jelly. I ask you, to what end? Dread it? Run from it? Destiny arrives all the same. And now, it's here. Or should I say, I am. It's endgame time! We're in the endgame now. Oh, oh, <laughs> you are kidding me. Oh, this is horrific. Hello and welcome to Well Good Movies, although that's slightly a lie for today because actually it's endgame time! So, I've been able to finally overthrow David and take this podcast for myself. So, what am I going to do with it, you ask? Well, I've always enjoyed the end games at the end of the episodes, but I felt that it wasn't enough. So, this episode is dedicated entirely to the art of the end game. We have a variety of former guests, three teams of two people each, all going to be competing for a variety of prizes and just generally my respect, something that David hasn't had in a while. So, let's meet our beautiful, beautiful guests. We have a rival podcast. These guys are people that we've worked with together for a long time. Sometimes we have great discussions, sometimes we have massively conflicting views, but nonetheless, they are good friends of ours. Meet Daniel Cullinane and Joe Richards! Hello, hello, hello. hello. Uh, next up, we have two wonderful individuals who have been paired up on episodes before. One is a music composer, and one is an animator. All I can say is, there's going to be a lot of creative fun from them. Let's meet James Gare and Nia Alavezos! <laughs> What's poppin'? And now, for our third team, we have some veterans of the podcast. We have our guests from episodes two and three of the revival of the podcast. All I can say is... Will their wisdom come with age? We will find out. Meet Die Hill and Stefanos Varakis! Oh. But of course, one thing is missing from this, and I think we need to address it now. What have I done with my co-host? Well, all I can say is, I haven't killed him, despite what the authorities might think. So to prove it, he's here now. He's going to be running all of the tech and bringing you a variety of fun facts about the games and your previous performances. Meet David Oscar. Hey, hello. It's nice to have a kind of day off from hosting DBs. <laughs> oh, uh, you, you, think this tech. Is, you think this is going to be a day off? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm putting no. you for the ringer, son. I'm, like, I'm currently in a wheel, a giant wheel right now, guys, just to power this entire thing. What, what I find amazing is the fact that I've been able to successfully kick you out of your office. <laughs> I literally came in here with, like, you know, just two AK-47s firing in the air and just pushed him down the stairs. It's great fun. <laughs> okay, so... How this is going to work, we have five different end games that people are going to go through. Depending on the results of that end game will determine how many team points our teams are going to win. So it doesn't matter how many points you actually gain. So if you win each individual end game, you gain three points. If you come second, you get two points. And if you come in third place or last, but, but third, but, but last, you get one point. Before that, I believe that you have team names. So David has taken them and is going to tell me now and I'm going to decide my favourite and we're going to give out some bonus points. What have I to fear? The Avengers. That's what we call ourselves. Sort of like a team. Earth's mightiest heroes type thing. Yes. It's not going to be biased in any way because Craig's not going to know who's made these team names and which team it is because any... Any name that has a real name in there, we'll use a pseudonym for now. But yeah, first up we have, uh, inspired by Lord of the Rings, Quizendale. Okay. The lovely duo of the Phantom Threads. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then we also have the great and wonderful Smith and Jones, mobster attorneys at law. Brackets, any association with organized crime are purely coincidental <laughs> winky face. 
And here I was Good luck fit- saying that throughout the podcast, Craig. <laughs> I was going to write these down. <laughs> I was literally just going to write it down right this second. Yeah. Okay, so... I can spell it out if you want. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need this spelling out. I literally just need the words... Right, so it's Smith and Jones, Ace Attorney at Laws, any association with organised crime is coincidental, winky face. Yes. Okay, I'm surprised I actually remember that. <laughs> Even though it's going to be an absolute arsehole for me throughout this entire episode, that is my favourite team name. So congratulations to whoever's team that was. Who was it? So that was uh, Stefanos and Dai, so it means that they are Florakis and Hill. <laughs> Mobster attorneys at law. I don't know what you're talking about. Is this new to me? So congratulations, I'm giving you a bonus two points. My second favourite team name of, uh, of those... Uh, is Quizendale. So congratulations to whoever that is. Although I think I'm going to go out on a limb and say that was James and Nia. Correct. Yes. Excellent. You gain yourself one bonus point. So what was your decision for going for the uh, Lord of the Rings theme? Um, well, Lord of the Rings is one of my favorite trilogies and like Return of the King is one of my favorite films. So I was like, I have to do something related to this. And James okay. was all cool with it. He was like, yeah, cool. I'll go with that. <laughs> That's what we like to see in teamwork. James somebody... gave me the support, you know. <laughs> oh, I was going to say somebody caring a lot, and the other person just having like a, a healthy level of apathy to just like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to stand in the way of your dreams. <laughs> yeah, and then that means, unfortunately, no bonus points. My least favorite team name, and they, they, they did this to themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so zero bonus points to the Phantom Freds. You know what? We really don't care. We don't want to annoy you. So. <laughs> it was worth it. It was definitely worth it, for sure. We talked about previous end games and how you guys have done. So before we get started today, we thought it'd be fun if we revisited some of those moments. So I want you guys to use this moment now to get prepped, to get ready for how the end games usually go. The frustration of not knowing that answer and Craig telling you after you've been agonizing it in your mind for so long the joyous moment when you finally get a correct answer and the weird and wonderful clips that you have to endure here is all of those moments guys so that one was brave scottish accent oh come on (laughs) oh obviously yeah uh yeah so uh your winning music as, as all winners deserve. God, I feel so bitter that I don't get winners. Being... <laughs> yeah. oh, I've never felt worse. <laughs> Main goal in terms of the end game was to do better than, obviously, my counterpart, Dan. I've got to say, I think I did far better than he did. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave with my head held high. No. Go on. Greyhound. You are kidding me. Oh, what? Yes. I was like, I knew it. He's just some... waiting for the word. Yeah. Uh, would you like some wings, sir? No, I've had enough. What <laughs> 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 This is horrific. Here's the answer. Look at that, Apu. It's not every day you see a horse with two rear ends. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Woo, 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 woo. Oh, I'm happy. <laughs> bow, 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 bow. <laughs> Laura is the winner with four. Bye. Good job. Woo, 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 woo. David. Oh. Get it, David. They did give it five stars. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? From which film? Uh, Young Frankenstein. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> God damn it. It's so annoying. The Greatest Show from The Greatest Showman. Is that the name of the title? I don't David. Know. <laughs> gotta wait until the end, guys. You are only getting one point because you that's not the Oh, it's got a blocked angle. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I have that point, David. Thank you. I can see you. I'm no, it genuinely. <laughs> <laughs> one that is either based me yeah. or gobble gobble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is one of those right? It's I, I really time. It might be. It's Lucy. turkey time. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> she says that. It's turkey time. Huh? Gobble, gobble. <laughs> no! <laughs> it's Space Jam. 
Oh, I was going right. to say Space Jam. No, no, no. Oh. Bill, yeah, Bill Murray uh, said it. Uh. That is the end of this end game. <laughs> awesome. And Wonderful. And no one died. <laughs> no. No, just everyone's hopes and dreams. <laughs> what better words to bring us into the first actual games? Also very clear, the Nia, Nia is definitely the most supportive guest, guys. That You know, I couldn't get a, a clip of Nia, like, showing rage. It was all support of the other people she was with. So, you got good support today, James. <laughs> Always. For <laughs> sure. Dan and Joe, on the other hand, a lot more. <laughs> a lot more uh, anger and frustration. But uh, I, uh, one of my favorites is definitely James. James's reaction to getting that cell block tango. Ah, oh, that was so disappointing. <laughs> yeah, and also the scolding I had to give him afterwards because he stole a bonus point potentially from the other guests. <laughs> deserved, still deserved. It's just the fact that you were so on it in terms of me giving, like, putting down the bonus point for the Neville walk alone. <laughs> it's just like because I wasn't sure. Are we ready for the first round? Bring it on, Bert. Let's do it. Okay. Round one. This may be familiar to some people. Who's that Pokemon? <laughs> Basically, so that is uh, Danny DeVito's penguin from uh, Batman Returns. Oh, God. <laughs> So basically what we have are a series of clips in which actors and actresses in films have made unusual noises, let's say. So what we want you to do is using our fancy buzzer system, it'll be essentially a race. So basically you're going to be racing against each other. So all players can buzz in, but we will only accept one answer per team. So it's basically whoever's the fastest member of your team will give your answer. You will gain one point for each correct answer, but if you can only give me something like, say, you recognize who the actor is or the character, but you don't know which film it is, uh, we will award you half a point. Do we have any questions about the rules for this game before we begin? What no. if we, we say the title of the film, but not the character or actor? All I primarily <laughs> want is the title. So if you give me only the title, you will get the full point. Okay. You only get a half point if you could be like, oh god, I don't know that it's Whiplash, but I know it's I know it's J.K. Simmons, so yeah, him, that sort of thing. I literally just unlocked the buzzer, and Joe is already <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I, I, I've got a title to maintain here, Craig. Okay, it kind of helps if you hear the sound first. <laughs> You can't just shout out every single film that's ever existed because I will just disqualify you if you do it too much. Craig, don't worry, he pre-anticipates everything, and I mean everything <laughs> in life. Clip number one. <laughs> Guys! Any idea? I mean, it's not, but is it a rubbish version of Jurassic Park? <laughs> you could say that but yeah, it's, it's technically true you know yeah it's technically true but it is it is not jurassic park so stefanos and hill uh mobs are to ace attorneys at law out this round <laughs> joe i'm gonna take a punt on dumb and dumber Ooh. is the answer dumb and dumber david play the reveal hey want to hear the most annoying sound in the world Oh, yeah. Guys! 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 Fellas. It is indeed Dumb and Dumber. Congratulations. Damn. Oh, good boy, Joe. Good boy. <laughs> oh, look how your tone has changed. <laughs> yeah, all the, I think all the things I said before, it was just, it was all a show, guys, you know. Are we ready for clip number two? Once... Oh, 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 I know this, I know this. Shit. Uh, us. Is the answer us? Play the reveal. We don't have anything here. This is our summer home. Game. We just got in today, so... Once... Upon... A time... There was a girl... It is indeed us. One of the yes. most terrifying performances from Lupita Nyong'o. 
Excellent work. I thought it sounded like Voldemort. That's where yeah. I was going to go for. Oh, I thought you were shooing for that one, Joe. It was like one of your favourite films. I yeah, know, but, yeah. Funnily enough, our test subjects did basically say they thought it was Voldemort. Uh, so you're not alone with that thought. At this point, I'd like to give a shout out to my test uh, subjects. I will one day let you out of the vault. Clip number three. James Gear. Lawrence Foster Jenkins. Play that reveal. On the breath. Project forward. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Excellent. So at this point, it's nice to see all teams getting points quite evenly. This yeah. is what we expected of you. One apiece. Clip number four. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> I'm trying to, to get the music. Yeah. Mm. It sounds familiar. <clears throat> Look at them squirm. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what do you think it is? Complete shot in the dark, and I'm going on this based on the fact that we've covered it before, and the music sounds very kind of Muppet Treasure Island to me. So I'm going for Muppet Treasure Island because we have covered it in the past. Okay, so that could plausibly be Tim Curry, maybe. It's not, but that's plausible. So, you're out. The other teams, any advancements? This is a part of it. It comes at the end of an evil plan, if that helps. No, I mean, yeah, just... if you're going to maniacally <laughs> laugh, I'd imagine you'd be after that. I don't know. I love to maniacally laugh when I'm about to do something good. I do when I'm making a cup of tea. That, that's actually a recording of Craig do, making this end game, guys. We'll have it one more time, but if nobody gets it, I'm going to say no points for this particular clip. <laughs> oh my god. Steph. Long shots. Hook? Play that reveal. Oh yes, you'll see. He'll crow, he'll fight, he'll fly, and then he'll die. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> the hook. Nice. <laughs> that is Dustin Hoffman's hook. Having a lot of fun there. Excellent. So that's another point for the mobsters ace attorney at law. Are we the ready? Full name, Craig. The full oh, name. Five. Floracus <laughs> and Hill, mobster ace attorneys at law. Any association with organized crime are purely coincidental. Wink face. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> are we ready? Are we ready for clip number five? Yeah. Okay, so we got some new players. So that is Daniel. Ooh, Big D's back in the game. Okay, so sorry, Joe. I'm going to take, a, a, again, a stab in the dark. Going off my instinct, I'm going to go for Ace Ventura. Mm. Oh. Uh, <laughs> good guess, yeah. good guess. What are you doing, Dan? What are you doing? Oh, yeah. genuinely, it sounded like it. <laughs> no, I would have gone for that. That would have been my guess, too. <laughs> ah. yeah. Well, now you have to quickly come up with a new guess. Liar, liar. That's my... I'm just thinking... It's not. So basically, the only team who haven't given an answer. Oh. Hmm. What's their name? <laughs> <laughs> um, Love how I took the power and David still found a way to torture me. <laughs> I'm questioning if it's Jim Carrey or not. Hmm. That's probably a sound suggestion. <laughs> Sounds like a t Are there any movies with lots of turkeys in them? David, would you like to play them the reveal? I want you to take Mrs. Gloop up to the fudge room. Oh. <laughs> oh. Come on, Dan and Joe. This was, what, <laughs> this was in your show. I mentioned this film. Yep. That was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That is... That is apparently how Willy Wonka summons his Oompa Loompas. Okay, are we ready for clip number six? Steph. 
The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Play that reveal. Ooh. Precious. Yep, every detail of that was correct, including which of the trilogy it was. I can even say the same. It was after the betrayal of Frodo, screaming yep. of Faramir. That's exactly Yay. the clip. So that's another point for Florakis and Hill, Mobster Race Attorney at Law, any association with organized crime or purely coincidental wing face. I don't know what no, you're talking, talking about. talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Clip number seven. <laughs> you have many maniacal laughs. What can I say? When people laugh maniacally, they make weird noises. We don't have the Muppets maniacal laugh. Maniacal I was laugh. about that. <laughs> so, what do you think it is? Um, sounded like Jack Nicholson to me, so I'm going for Batman. Sorry, Dan. Sorry, two, me. Two things left to play. <laughs> <sighs> Steph. I want to say is James Jonah Jameson, J.K. Simmons. Now, maybe Spider Man 2? Play the reveal. Oh um, my god. <laughs> we are so gonna lose. <laughs> Killing it. Are you serious? Indeed we are, that was indeed. Uh J. Jonah Jameson, played by my boy J.K. Simmons. So, that's another point. <sighs> For Florakis and Hill, Morse's Ace Attorney of Law, any association with organised crime, a purely coincidental wig face. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, we have one clip left for this game. This idiot! This is the unit! I'm sitting on a gold mine! Joe. Mrs. Doubtfire, Robin Williams. Oh, yeah. Play the reveal. Oh, by the way, do you have any special skills? Oh, yes. I do voices. What do you mean you do voices? This idiot! This is idiot! I'm sitting on a gold mine! A gold mine of points, that is, because that is indeed correct. Okay, so that brings us to the end of round one. David, anything interesting to tell us before you give us the scores? Yeah, obviously, well done to Steph and Di. Did pr very well in that round. Uh, and also, yeah, credit to James, I think, for the Florence Foster Jenkins. That was quite a random film. So I think that, that, was, that was a good one. Thank you very much. <laughs> cool. Okay, so what were the final scores? So on that one, we have... Here we go. I'm doing it now, isn't it? <laughs> so we have uh, Florakis and Hill, mobster attorneys at law, any association with organized crime or purely coincidental winky face with four points. We have... The Phantom Threads with two points, and we have Quizendale with one point. Excellent. So those scores have been added to the leaderboard, so well done. So now number two, the... Uh, the Autumn Shank Amy Filer. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> right, so uh, I'm going to have to correct this a second. Uh, David, go to the next slide. No, that's better. The Tom Hanks film year. Still hush this comic out the foul. There's your mama. Oh no. Oh for God's oh. sake. Oh. Craig. <laughs> right. What have you done? No, no, it's not me. It's David. I gave David a very specific task. Bring on the rules. Yeah, so David is really screwed up. Typical. I asked him to retrieve a series of films from the last good year, which was 2017, <laughs> but he's managed to jumble them all up. So I, I guess I'm going to have to have you guys sort it out. So what's going to happen is I'm going to show you anagrams of films from 2017, as well as potential hints as to what those films are, and we want you to name those films. So the team that wins gives me the most correct anagrams. Uh, so for this, we actively uh, encourage conferring with your partner. So the way that this will work is we will show you them all to you one by one. So you have time to discuss them and come up with your thoughts. 
uh, basically, bef I want you to send me the answers via the Zoom chat privately before we reveal the answers. Okay, are we ready for the first anagram? Duck logo. Duck logo indeed. So, at Freddy's Freakish, three words. It's a book adaptation with an emphasis on the kinky. So if Cullinane doesn't get this, I'll be very shocked. <laughs> are, are these all from 2017? Yes. Nice. Anagram number two. Ego Tut. Two words. It's a psychological horror with a bleak message. Number three. Along. It's a one word title. Close to Alone, which our title character is. Number four. Champignon memorized. Three words with celebrations for our friendly neighbor. Number five. Albeit condom. <laughs> Two words. The hint, my favorite color on a woman. I promise this makes sense. It's not me just being randomly misogynist. Number six. Fleetest hat boxes. It's four words, which is, a, which is about a biopic which sees man against their greatest foe. Number seven. Ahmed Hollower Intently. This is a six word film title. And the clue is that it's what the Amazon CEO, Jeff Bezos, is trying to get. So this is a little political satire in here, yeah? <laughs> Number seven. Adar Jilters Swatters. This is a five word film title for a divisive sci fi film. And I mean it's seriously, seriously divisive. And finally, then, number nine, and I'll give you about two minutes to wrap up and then we'll have the answers. Emmett Jive, Ohio. It's a free word film title, an animated film you'd need to use more than words to review. How are people feeling? Quietly confident? <laughs> oh. This is so horrendous. Feeling oh. <laughs> worse than I've ever felt. Like, in my literally, life. I'm just. Wow. Oh no! I feel stupid. <laughs> I know. Like, can I say I tested these on David last night? He got literally none of them correct. <laughs> okay, thank God. Oh my God! I found one of them, and, and it infuriates me that I didn't get it the first time. Oh. It's a divisive sci-fi. <laughs> to be At fair, point, I didn't have the clues. <laughs> Is James confident or happy, or was he just <laughs> like? Yeah, not, not my own performance near ceiling this one. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready to have the answers? Although still nobody has sent me anything. Just right. Two seconds, two seconds, Craig. All right, oh, man, this man, is man, difficult. Bloody and... I love it if somebody has like breakfast at Tiffany's or something. Like that's not <laughs> how is that 2017? Nineteen fifty. There's one of the one. I'm not going to say which one, but one of these answers I want to analyze down to the core because I find it fascinating. So number one. What do people think number one is for at Freddy's Freakish? I say it, I said it's Fifty Shades Darker. 
That's interesting because that's not what your partner sent me. <laughs> oh, sorry, I sent the wrong one. The cracks are starting to appear. <laughs> yeah, I was looking through the scroll of messages and got the wrong one. So unfortunately, by the admission of my own rules, I have to take the written word. So the submission from <laughs> the Rackus and Hill, Monster, uh, Bob says Ace Attorney at Law, any association with all, nice crime, a purely coincidental wink face, is Fifty Shades Free. Phantom Freds and uh, Quizendale, what is the answer you gave? Oh, Fifty Shades Darker. Yeah, Fifty Shades Darker. It's Fifty Shades Darker. Something. Number two. What do we think it is? What What was Ego Tut? Get out. Do we all agree? Yes. It's get out. Excellent. So this is one that David did not get. I might remind <laughs> you. I just want Ego Tut as a movie. That's what it is. Number just... three. A long. Who is going along in their movie? I said Logan. Okay, so I'll tell you the submissions I had. Um, so indeed, uh, Steph and I said Logan. Dan and Joe said Logan. Nia and James said Wonder. So, okay. I, okay. <laughs> the answer is Logan. So basically, they've managed they've managed to add a letter and a W and t- and take out the L. So. Okay, number four, Champignon Memorized. I think pretty much everyone said it. It's Spider-Man Homecoming. Okay, number five, so nobody has answered number five. So at this point, I'm just gonna tell you the answer is Atomic Blonde. Oh, oh man. Dan, clue- get, get that blonde hair dye out for that date. <laughs> Absolutely shies for on here I come. <laughs> So we've only had one submission for question six, which is Die submitting Citizen Kane. <laughs> oh, well, we, did, we did get an old movie there. We did get an old one. So the answer is actually Battle of the Sexes. Oh. Oh. Mm. Yeah, so this is the film which basically is a sort of biopic for Billie Jean King. Number seven, again, nobody answered apart from Die, who went with Mr. Kane. And the clue was this is what the C- Amazon CEO... Uh, Jeff Bezos is trying to get. Steph, you've sort of had a revelation. What do you think it is? He was dying. Die, die, die mentioned it. Oh. Yeah, and then I thought it couldn't have been. Well, yeah, well, well really technically, it. technically, it was released in 2018 in the UK. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, <laughs> oh controversy, Dan. <clears throat> okay. There we are. All the money in the world. See, I thought it was clever. <laughs> uh, number eight. Uh, this is again where people have started submitting answers. Uh, so the clue was a da jilted, uh, uh, jilted swatters, the most divisive sci-fi film. It is obviously Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Oh. So, so for that we got answers from the Phantom Freds and Quizendale. Unfortunately, the answer from the the last team is just I don't know. <laughs> and finally, number nine, Emmett Jai of Ohio. You can you need more than words to review it. It's an animated film. What do we think it is? It's it's a film that um, the, it really missed out on the Oscars, I, I would say. Um, you know, <laughs> we, we, talk, we talk about diversity. I mean, come on, it's, it's got to be the Emoji Movie. Oh, yeah, it's indeed the Emoji Movie. I'm sorry, I've deleted the parts in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest film of all time. Okay, so basically that's another that's another point each for Quizendale and the Phantom Freds. So David, at the end of that. What are the scores? Uh, so in that round, it was six points to Dan and Joe slash the Phantom Threads, five points to Quizendale, Nia and James, and three points to Steph and Die, aka Florakis until <laughs> mobster attorneys at law, any association with organized crime, a purely coincidental winky face. So, yeah. I, I, I'm happy that at least other people struggled with this one like I did, so I think it's the visual people. I don't deal well with jumbled up words. I can't do crosswords, guys. I can't do word searches. So that, that does some interesting things to the schools. So at the end uh, so at the end of two rounds, currently in third place on four points, we have Quizendale. In second place on five points, we have the Phantom Freds. And in first place with six points, we have Florakis and Hill, Mobs as Ace Attorney at Law, any association with organised crime, a purely coincidental wink face. I played the fifth. <laughs> Excellent. 
Are we ready now for round number three? Bring it. Do it. Excuse me, hot stuff coming through. Excuse me, up one side, Harry. Why, Hermes, they're lovely. So this is special delivery. So, what are the rules? I'll tell you the rules. I sent David to intercept the Amazon purchases of various actors. We found out that they're very egotistical because they keep ordering things that reference their film roles and careers in some way. So we're going to show you one by one a list of these items. Uh, the first team to, uh, to buzz in with the right actor wins. The earlier the, you get the clue, uh, the more points that you'll win. So for example, if you get it on the first clue, you get, the full, you get a full five points. If you only get it on the last clue, you only get one point. Basically, just think creatively about how they might link to some actor in some way. So, clue number one for actor or actress number one. Bananas. Uh, Steph has buzzed in. And the circus? It's, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a bad opening gambit. Is it Andy circus? It is not. Such a good guess, though. Anyone else for bananas? Okay. In that case, we go to clue number two. A Guardians of the Galaxy original issue. Go for the next one, which is... A Dreadnought. Oh, again, everyone's being very cautious, but losing their points. We'll go to the fourth clue. A Red Headband. Just see bewildered faces right now. Are we going to go to the final clue? Might need to be on it for this. Final clue. Boxing gloves. <laughs> F is buzzed in first, oh. followed by James. <laughs> Who do you think Sylvester it is, Sylvester Stallone. Is the answer Sylvester Stallone? And the answer is indeed Sylvester Stallone. So David, would you like to tell us uh, how all of those things relate to Sylvester Stallone? <laughs> so bananas he was in a film called bananas uh guardians of the galaxy issue uh, original issue he was in guardians of the galaxy volume 2 in which he played one of the original guardians in the comic uh a dreadnought because he played judge dread uh a red headband because he was rambo and boxing gloves because he was rocky i think i'm just disappointed with myself to be <laughs> <laughs> you, you've got you know the the logic in our mind for the future ones oh, great. the thing that threw me off was the bananas that's the one that threw me off yeah that's that's kind of why it's there <laughs> if you you're, get if you, you're saying this craig you deserve the five points to be fair if you got that from the get-go <laughs> Bananas. Sylvester Stallone. Like, I'm, oh my I'm, god. <laughs> I'm yet to meet a person whose favourite film is Bananas. <laughs> Look, just, so just to clarify, Craig, if you buzz in and get it wrong, you can buzz in again for this one. For the uh, for the next clues. You're not out of the game entirely. You just can't... You basically can't guess again for, like, say, five points, but you have another chance for four points. Okay. Okay. So, actor number two. A Martian figurine. <laughs> oh, Dan has buzzed in. I'm going to do uh, Matt Damon. It's a solid guess. Is Matt Damon correct? Good shout, Dan. Oh, that is a good shout. It is a good shout. It's one that our test subjects also went for. Okay, I think we'll move on to clue number two, which is... A hammer. <laughs> oh, James is buzzed in. Not for hammer, for, no, for Martian figurine. Okay, so if you get it from Martian figurine, uh, I will give you the five points, but if you... I doubt I'll get it, it's just I right. thought I'd give it a chance. Okay. <laughs> Dwayne Johnson. Is it Dwayne Johnson? Yeah, alright. Okay, oh, what was the gonna... logic in that? He was in Doom, wasn't he? Uh, okay. Uh, Joe has buzzed in. It's probably not going to be it, but, you know, uh, the Hammer, Chris Hemsworth, obviously Thor, Hammer, um, Marsh, Figurine, um, with uh, Men in Black, maybe. Solid logic, but unfortunately, it's not correct. <laughs> Steph has buzzed in. I, uh, Alan Schwarzenegger. Is it Alan? Uh, Alan? So <laughs> <laughs> Alan. Alan. <laughs> Alan. Is it Alan from down oh. the road? <laughs> <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Is it Arnold Schwarzenegger? Damn it! Okay. It's not. 
So do we have any guesses from uh, Quizendale? Uh... Um, no. Can I guess this is random? Can I give a random one? Sure. Jeff Daniels? Is it Jeff Daniels? No. Okay, in that case, buzzers are clear. We'll now go to clue number three. An Eevee plushie. Oh. James has buzzed in. Ryan Reynolds? Again, a solid bet. Is it Ryan Reynolds? Oh, God mm. damn it. Vim <laughs> Sebastian. It's, not, me, it's yeah. not Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to the fourth clue then. A panda bear called Padamame. Oh, oh. Is that a buzz? <laughs> <laughs> After some of the most enthusiastic flailing I've seen in a while, James has oh, it's actually in. It's actually really stupid. What do you think it is? Uh, Hayden Christensen. Is it Hayden Christensen? I don't know why. I, ju- I saw Pat May. I just panicked. <laughs> <laughs> David, is he right? You are not correct. Uh, Dan has buzzed in. Right, this is a long... I don't think it is this. <laughs> Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm really stupid. But I think like Panda, Kung Fu Panda, I'm going to go with Jack Black. Is the answer Jack Black? <laughs> okay, so now we have the chance. Uh, one last one. Uh, Die has buzzed in. Was Dustin Hoffman in um, the Panda movie as well? He was like it, the old one. Is it Dustin Hoffman? Uh, so not. many wrong answers are clicking. I All want right. to click the green, guys. <laughs> I will say the last one will definitely give it away. So get ready. Three, two, one. Black Swan. Yeah, Natalie Portman. Is the answer Natalie Portman? Why did I think that it was Hayden Christensen off a bed? That's why I thought when you when you said about Padme, I thought you would just revealed it to <laughs> everyone else, <laughs> and nobody picked you up on it. Yep, the answer is indeed Natalie Portman. Oh, so David, if so you could, close. If you could explain the logic behind those items. Uh, so the Martian figurine. I loved the logic with the Martian, but it was because she was in Mars Attacks. Uh, the hammer. I knew, I knew how to do some of that film. Mm. Uh, because I know you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't make these <laughs> restaurants. Um, you wrote that one, David. Yeah, to be fair. Uh, the hammer is because she'll be playing Thor, uh, or it's going to be in Thor: Love and Thunder. And the Evie plushie, she played Evie Hammond from V for Vendetta. Again, <laughs> if anybody knows Craig, you know why that's there. Uh, a panda bear called Padamame. There's a uh, robot chicken skit where uh, the ref- uh, Chancellor Palpatine references Padme as Padamame. And the uh, Black Swan is a given. She was in Black Swan. Yeah, so... That's I'd love to see a Black Swan delivered to somebody, actually. Just go in there like, Wah! oh my god! <laughs> Oh, I'm pretty pretty sure that's my equivalent of just like petrol bombing someone's house, just sending them <laughs> a black swan. Yes, yeah, basically like hot fuzz. So that'll be a point for Quizendale this round. Number can't three. Say, can't say I'm happy. <laughs> An old VHS of the Flintstones cartoon. Oh. Dan has buzzed in. Oh, I completely forgot his name. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say it? <laughs> oh, um, oh, what's his name? He's in 10 Cloverfield Lane. And I completely, yeah. it's completely got me. No, I'm sorry. It's completely gone. It's Sunday morning. I can't. Okay, uh, we're buzzing that incorrect. I thought Sunday meant that you had religion with you earlier. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Steph. it's not John Goodman? So is it John Goodman? Uh-huh. So when I tested this last night, somebody was trying to remember John Goodman. I suggested John Goodman, and the response was, and I quote, "That's the bitch." Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's the instant response to John Goodman, but okay. Number two, let's see if this gives you more hope. Some ginger ale. <laughs> Steph has buzzed in. Halle Berry. Is it Halle Berry? What? Uh, That's an astounding. Yes. What? An astounding four points there for Floracus and Hill, mobsters, oh. Ace Attorney at Law, any association with organized crime, a merely coincidental <laughs> wink face. Let's just show the let's show the rest of the clues just to see how far people would have got it. A map book filled with cloud pictures. 
a weather report, and a leather cat suit. So David, what's the thinking behind all of these? I'm actually intrigued if anybody can just shout out what, what they think they are. Uh, the I mean, cloud. the Flintstones, because she was in Flintstones. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think that was her first film role. Joe, what was one? You uh, the Cloud Pictures, when it's obviously Cloud Atlas. Mm-hmm. Yep. And let's not forget the leather cat suit, because she was in the best film of all time, Catwoman. And uh, the weather report, because it's raining men. No, uh, sorry, uh, because she played Storm in uh, the X-Men films. <laughs> So yes, but that's quite impressive. You got it. You got it off of uh, some ginger ale. Oh yeah, yeah. and ginger ale. Did, what was your thinking there? Oh no, the basic out of the Flintstones. That was my second choice. Uh, oh, I see. Right. So the you, thinking so you behind left gin- out Rick Moranis. <laughs> so uh, the ginger ale is because she plays a character called Ginger Ale in Kingsman: The Golden Circle. Yeah, that's why I was impressed because when that came up, I thought this is going to throw people even more now. But yeah, <laughs> well, as we, as we all know, she was the absolute driving force of that film. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the big love okay. interest. Okay, so now we come on to our final actor for this round. So, are we ready? Number one, an apology note from ten years ago from H. Wood. No. Nope. No takers? Okay. Play it that way. Number two, a blood diamond. <laughs> oh, uh, Dan, uh, Dan has buzzed in. It's a long shot because I do believe he was in this film. Leonardo DiCaprio? Is it Leonardo DiCaprio? Oh my god! Yes, <laughs> Dan! Yeah. Yes, mate! What on earth? What on earth? I, I, really was, I, was, I was just waiting for that. Uh-uh. Okay, show the rest of the clues. Let's see what let's see what we had. The complete works of F. Scott Fitzgerald, a dream catcher, and a toy boat called the King of the World. Okay, so what do we think the logic is for some of these? Uh, dream catcher Inception. Correct. Yes. Um, let's go, let's go Great Fitzgerald. Gatsby. Great yep. Gatsby. Uh, Dan has already said that the uh, DiCaprio was in the film Blood Diamond. So An apology got... note from 10 years ago from H. Wood. Does anybody know what this could be? Uh, catch me if you can. Nope, it's just literally he it was 10 years before he got his Oscar, which everyone was uh, going on about for all those years. Oh, it's that bear one. What's the bear one? Mm. Uh, Revenant. And then the toy boat. Yeah, I'll see. Titanic. Yep, which David for a while was trying to get me to write on top of the world, despite the fact <laughs> that that's not the quote. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... What are the scores from that? Because there were a lot of upsets in that. Yeah. So there was... The Phantom Threads had four points. Uh, You had Quizendale with one point. uh, But still leading the way uh, is Florakis and Hill. Mobsters, attorneys at law, any association with organized crime are purely coincidental. Winky Face with five points. Excellent. So those scores have been logged. And now we come on to game number four, which is we finish each other's sandwiches. Come on, James and Nia, you know this one. <laughs> that I do. Yeah. Yes. So this time we're doing the comeback special. So giving you t- uh, the teams currently not in first place the opportunity to come back. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. So, in the spirit of making a comeback, here are moments of great responses in film. What we want you to do, and this is a no conferring round, so each of you will give an answer individually, is I want you to tell me what quote is going to be coming next. So the team that has as close to the correct answer as possible will gain the points. So first up, we're going to the world of Erin Brockovich. So in this, uh, her boss has a very poignant question about how she intends to get some information. What makes you think you can just walk in there and find uh, what we need? Craig, can you read my answer in like a Cockney EastEnders accent, please? Thanks. I will. Well, I mean, I'm going to get you to read them out. So, oh, okay. Craig, <laughs> Craig, I don't take requests. <laughs> <laughs> I don't take demands, more likely. <laughs> Could you play one more time? Yep. 
What makes you think you can just walk in there and find uh, what we need? That's the thing. I know the scene. I know exactly what they're referencing about. I, was, I can't, like, get that quote. Mm. Like I said, if you get close enough, I may award your team the points. <sighs> okay. So, I'm just going to ask people to read them out in the order in which they sent them to me. So, Daniel. What makes you think you can just walk in there and find uh, what we need? Is I'm your mother! <laughs> can you imagine? Can you actually imagine? Outstanding. Uh, uh, <laughs> Ty, what do you think it is? Uh... Mine was, because this is actually a very good library. <laughs> what the hell? I'm not sure I was right, though. Joe, what do you think it is? I just went, because I starred in Pretty Woman, which was brilliant. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, not wrong. Nia, what do you think it is? I said, don't talk to me like I'm an idiot. Makes sense. I remember it's one of the quotes from the film, but I'm just like, I can't. I've seen it so long ago. Okay, uh, Steph? Oh, don't judge me. It's something like that, but I made it sound very dirty. <laughs> <laughs> because I know how to persuade thirsty men. Oh. Uh. Mm. And finally, James? Female intuition. Okay, let's play the reveal. Let's see if any of those are correct. What makes you think you can just walk in there and find uh, what we need? They're called boobs, Ed. Oh. Close. Close. Yeah, I, think so, right? I think I was right. So, so it's, not, it, it's not far from because I'm your mother, is it really? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do in this situation is I think, I, I think in terms of spirit, I'm going to award, uh, I'm going to award Steph's answer half a point. So now we come on to clip number two uh, and we now go to the realms of Guardians of the Galaxy where Drax has taken possession of something that doesn't belong to him. I like your knife, I'm keeping it. Okay, so we've got answers from everyone. So, in order, Steph. That's my favourite knife. Or oh, to that variation. James. You call that a knife, this is a knife. <laughs> <laughs> nice bit of cross genre there. Uh, Daniel. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> was that cockney or was that still sticking still sticking with East Enders you can okay. have it <laughs> I didn't even re I didn't even realise space had an East End um, <laughs> Nia um hey that was my favourite knife die I like your knife I'm keeping it you're welcome thank you for your service <laughs> and they make love <laughs> and finally Joe I just went with hooked on a feeling. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay. And type the music. <laughs> Let's see if any of you were correct. I like your knife. I'm keeping it. That was my favorite knife. Nice. So that's, yeah. that's one point for both uh, Quizendale and Floracus and Hill mon uh, mobsters ace attorney at law any association with organised crime purely coincidental wing face I mean excellent. sure <laughs> <laughs> excellent okay so going from one swashbuckling world of space piracy to actual piracy with Pirates of the Caribbean where one officer of the law tells Jack Sparrow exactly what he thinks of him You are, without doubt, the worst pirate I've ever heard of. That was like even before you ever played a clip, I knew yeah. exactly which one you're going to put. Uh, that's always helpful. Like minor wording here, uh, here or there, you have all basically put the same answer. So let's just go through it quick fire. James. But you have heard of me. Joe. But you have heard of me. Steph. But you have heard of me. Die. And you've not heard of Captain Allen. <laughs> 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 I did actually know the right answer, but everyone, Steph's already got it. Yeah, Di, Di did put, but you have heard of me. Daniel. But you have heard of me. Nia. But you have heard of me, yes. David. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. 
<laughs> and everyone gets a point. <laughs> Made everyone look really big headed when revealing their answers there. Yeah. yeah. Well keep that keep that energy going because now we go to the film Some Like It Hot with one of the most infamous last lines of movie history. Get ready. I can never have children. We can adopt some. But you don't understand, Osgood. Oh, I'm a man. Oh, I think. Damn. And I've seen this thing. My mom forced me so many times. It's so good. I think it's that. So, let's go through it in order like usual. Nia. Well, nobody's perfect. I'm going to skip Joe because I'm going to read that one last because it made me laugh a lot. Uh, James. I don't care. <laughs> Die. <laughs> uh, nobody's perfect. Daniel. I'm also your mother! <laughs> Steph. Nobody's perfect. And finally, Joe. So, firstly, my mum's going to be really annoyed if, if she listens because it is her favourite film. So I'm sorry, Helen, that I, <laughs> that I didn't know this. Um, I went for... I can never have children. We can adopt some. But you don't understand, Osgood. Oh, I'm a man. I've got gas in the tank. I've got money in the bank. I've got news for you, baby. You're looking at the man. <laughs> it's just lyrics for the man from The Killers. What? Joe Richards <laughs> quoting a Killers lyric? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. So... So in that situation, we've got that killer's quote from Joe. We've got a Cockney quote from Daniel. We've got James basically just being apathetic. And the uh, and the nobody's perfect line from Steph, Di, and Nia. David, play the reveal. I can never have children. We can adopt some. But you don't understand, Osgood. Oh, I'm a man. Well, nobody's perfect. Nobody is perfect indeed, especially considering that Nia sent it to me originally with no bodies perfect. I got too excited. I was like, oh. <laughs> so that's based. So that'll be uh, one point for Quizendale and for Ackerson Hill mobs the race attorney at law. Any association with organized crime, a purely coincidental wig face. Hey, now we come Frank is my friend. Now we <laughs> so now we come on to the final film, and this is one which, if you've seen it, I'm genuinely very sorry. But it's an animated film called *The Legend of the Titanic*, a film that suggests act, a film that actually suggests that the Titanic didn't sink, didn't kill 1,500 people, but it was saved by a giant octopus fighting a gang of sharks. Isn't it like a musical? That'd be amazing, though. I think I've seen like. There, there's two. There's two anim. Well, there's actually three animated Titanic films. That's the sad part of it. <laughs> so in this scene, we have two mice watching our lead protagonist uh, dancing and discussing their feelings about it. So I'll tell you at the end what specifically I want you to give. Uh, I'll see her in my dreams for the rest of my life. I hate to be a spoil sport, but I would like to draw to your attention the fact that she's a woman and you're a mouse. <laughs> well, there's one thing I'm not. What is the one thing that he's not? in this situation. <laughs> and he so is a mouse. So basically the sentence is going to be, well, there's one thing I'm not, and that's... So Randomness will help you in this sense. Okay. So we'll go through them in order again. So, Di, what do you think it is? Well, I just went with a rubbish version of one thing there's not, that's picky. I feel like that's what they would have written. Okay. You would, you would, you would wish that. I feel like it's this rubbish line a rubbish film would come out with. <laughs> Makes sense. So, next up we've got James. Uh, it's one thing I'm not, and that's a good voice actor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh. Um, <laughs> Nia? Um, I put, I'm not prejudiced. Not prejudiced. Uh, Daniel? There's one thing I'm not, I'm not a cheese nibbler. Like your mother! <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want him to say that. <laughs> Steph? I'm not a schmuck like your father. <laughs> Seems to be attacking this mouse's family a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and Joe? There's one thing I'm not. It's not going to survive the cruise ship. 
I don't know. I, I, I got stuck with the English okay. on that one. <laughs> so I'm going to let David play it and then we'll see what happens. Uh, I'll see her in my dreams for the rest of my life. I hate to be a spoil sport, but I would like to draw to your attention the fact that she's a woman and you're a mouse. <laughs> well, there's one thing I'm not, and that's a racist. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> I was going to wow. guess that. Wait. <laughs> He's not a racist, guys. He likes women. Mice can like women. It's not racist. Uh, Nia was incredibly they... close. Yeah, yeah, I was like, well, it I'm has gi- to be something related to this. I'm giving, I'm giving that answer half a point because I, yeah. I feel like that is so, so close. You know, okay, so I genuinely garbage. was going to say racist as a comedy answer, but I thought <laughs> a kid's movie, they just right? wouldn't use the word racist. That, that, that's why I did say at the beginning. I was like, the more bizarre you go, you probably will be right. <laughs> Yeah, it's just so out of place. Yeah, they do actually. But also, it's not racism, it's speciesism. (laughs) Okay, so what are the scores at the end of that? Uh, So, the Phantom Threads had one point. The Quizendale had three and a half points. And then tied, thanks to their half point. Uh, We also have Thoracus and Hill. Mobster attorneys at law and the association with organized crime are purely coincidental. Winky face also with three and a half points. So okay, it's a so tie. Oh. okay, so in that situation, basically uh, three points will go to both of those teams and two points to the Phantom Freds. Wonderful. Yeah. Love so. the the East Enders stuff in there. The actual the Titanic reminded me a bit actually, Dan and Joe, of when you had Tom and Jerry the movie come up in. Uh, your villain's monologue end game, <laughs> which was also a bizarre choice from us. Okay, so now we come on to the final game of today, which is lovingly called Mojo Mind. This is your first proper timed challenge. So... I've taken three random top 10 lists by the channel Watch Mojo, and I've written 10 questions for each list where the answers are basically entries on that list. So what will happen is I will ask the team in last place to choose A, B, or C, which will basically determine which of the three lists you'll basically be asked questions on. Uh, then you need to decide who's going to answer who's going to answer each question individually. So the idea is you'll alternate. So if you say... Uh, so in this situation, uh, the team currently uh, in third place on eight points is Qui- uh, Quizendale. So Tell basically... everyone. Well, you're going to find out eventually. <laughs> so the idea is that I will ask you, okay, so do you want A, B, or C? You'll say your letter and you say, okay, so who wants to answer first? So think of it like the first person will answer every odd question and the second que- the second person will answer every even question. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You will have a maximum of four min uh, four minutes to answer, but basically this is quick fire. So I want them as quickly as possible. So don't dawdle. I can only accept your first answer. Note: not all of the questions will be film-related questions, but they will still give you an answer, which will be an entry on that list. So the example I've given is: what condition could you develop if you were in a car accident? The answer being whiplash, because that is also the name of a film. But so, do we have any questions? Before we begin. Yeah. Okay. So, like I've already alluded to, uh, Quizendale is indeed in third place on eight points. Which set would you like? A, B, or C? Uh, B. Happy with B? Do it. Okay. I think James will be happy with this choice. You'll be answering questions from the list. Top ten movies based on musicals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh wait, no yeah. musicals. Uh, oh no, no. no. <laughs> you don't know okay. the musicals? <laughs> no. Okay. Who's going first? Will it be will it be Nia or James? It doesn't matter. I can go first. Okay. All right. Your time starts now. Nia, which movie musical regularly had screenings and performances for years where the audience the audience actively dressed up as the type of re- in the type of revealing clothing that the cast do throughout that film? Oh, no. Can you repeat the question? Which movie musical regularly had screenings and performances for years where the audience actively dressed up in the type of revealing clothing that the cast do throughout the film? Uh, 
I have no idea. Okay, so that's a pass. James, which movie musical adapted from the 1964 show of the same name features songs such as To Life, Miracle of Miracles, and If I Were a Rich Man? Uh, Fiddler on a Roof. Correct. Nia. Written by Andrew Lloyd Webber, what is the name of the musical starring Gerard Butler that stage counterpart of the same name received a sequel called Love Never Dies? Spence with Opera? Correct. James. What is the first name of the boy whose last name is Twist, as depicted by Charles Dickens in the story of the same name? Oliver. Correct. Nia. Using certain Italian phrases, which song released in 19, uh, September 1975 gave a certain Swedish group their second UK top 10 Mamma Mia? By reaching number one, Mamma Mia, that is correct. James. Emma Thompson reviewed this performance of Audrey Hepburn in this particular movie musical, claiming that she couldn't sing, couldn't act, and was fantastically twee after Hepburn's role as Eliza Doolittle had to be oh, dubbed by... Lady. I have to finish the question. By Soprano Marnie Nixon, what was the film My Fair Lady? Correct. Yeah, that's a travesty. She should have been allowed to keep her voice in that film. Nia. Which city in America was home to the first televised US presidential candidates debate and is referred to by many as the Windy City? Chicago. Correct. James. With a remake on the way from Steven Spielberg, which mu- musical tells an adapted story of Romeo and Juliet with Maria and Tony in place of the previous star-crossed lovers? Oh, West Side Story. Correct. Nia. Which musical shares its name in pronunciation with fluid found in fatty foods, car workshops, and a European country with various financial issues? I pass. James. If you are listening to songs on the radio via headphones and can only hear those songs, what specifically are you listening to? What? Could you say that again? If you are listening to songs on the radio via headphones and can only hear those songs, what specifically are you listening to? (laughs) What? (laughs) One more time and then I'll give up. What was it? (laughs) If you are listening to songs on the radio via headphones and can only hear those songs... What specifically are you listening to? Oh, I don't know, Pat. Okay, so that's all of your questions. So, your your past questions. Uh, the movie musical that regularly had screenings with uh, audiences dressed up like the cast was the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, shit. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> that's, that's fine. Uh, the musical that shares its name in pronunciation with fluid found in fatty foods, car workshops, and a European country with various financial issues was Greece. <laughs> <laughs> and I you was looking at Steph for that. Myself. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you saw <just all> suck. <laughs> Did you actually know that, Steph? Did you know? <laughs> oh, good one, good one. And finally, if you are listening to songs on the radio via headphones and can only hear those songs, you are specifically listening to the sound of music. Oh, shut up! Oh, shut oh, up! Oh, oh. damn! So, David, oh, how, <laughs> how did they score? Uh, they scored seven in that round. So, respect. Seven. That's a respectable nice. score. Shut up. <laughs> okay. So now we move on to the Phantom Freds, who were on nine going into this round. Would you like question set A or C? Go on, Joe. Um, let's go C. C? Okay. And who will be answering first? Um, I nominate Dan. <laughs> oh. Okay. So... Dan, followed by Joe, on the round, which is top 10 unexpected blockbusters. Hey. Hey, okay. Okay. So your time... I'm so nervous, starts. I'm going to pee. <laughs> now, Daniel, a film from 1990, if you were the only person in your house, what you are what? Hello? Uh, I can't accept. Um, if you're the only person in your house? Yep. If you are the only person in your Single? house, you... uh, no, you are home alone. Oh, right. Joe, in which film starring Zach Galifianakis and Bradley Cooper and featuring a cameo from Mike Tyson and a tiger, sees a group of friends in Las Vegas for a stag weekend lose their friend Doug due to not remembering the events of the night before? The Hangover. Correct. Daniel, Sasha Baron Cohen is a character comedian who has released a number of films based on his characters, such as Ali G, Bruno, and which other character? All right. Correct. Joe. Which found footage film released in 2007 spawned a series of sequels with the seventh installment originally intended for release in 2021, but has been pushed back for release to 2022? Paranormal Activity. Correct. Daniel. Sharing its name with a card from the game Yu-Gi-Oh, which 1990 film, uh, 1999 film was popularised due to the line, I see dead people? 
Oh, uh, The Sixth Sense. Correct. Joe, which film by the Wachowskis explored the possibility that reality is a lie and that human experiences are simply simulated, causing a number of greater philosophical discussions, even to the extent of the film being used in various philosophy lectures at university? The Matrix. Correct. Daniel, in what film does the robot T-800 make a gesture that indicates one intention, one's intention to return to a place in the future? Terminator. Correct. Joe, giving your answer as a plural, in what part of the skull would you find the teeth and is necessary to move in order for most animals to be able to eat? This is a surprise blockbuster. Uh, pass. <clears throat> Daniel, what is the name of the ship that sank in 1912 causing the deaths of over 1,500 people and free low budget and horrible animated movies? Titanic. <laughs> Correct. Joe, this film was released in 1977 under a shorter name, but once its success was recognised, the, the creator of this film went back and renamed it with a longer title to emphasise its position as one within a trilogy. What is the film's new name? Uh, Star Wars Episode Seven: A New Hope. I can only accept half of that. It's Star Wars Episode Four. Um, what am I on about? Yeah, A New Hope. Okay, so that's all your questions. So you had one pass. Uh, giving your answer as a plural, in what part of the skull would you find the teeth is necessary to move in order for most animals to be able to eat? It's jaws. Oh. Uh, yeah. So, David, how did they score? They had seven, but uh, it's whether you're going to give a point at all or half or anything to the Star Wars one. I'm giving half because okay. I think it is. I think part of the rename was saying which episode it was, and I yeah. think it's vital. So. so it's, yeah, seven and a half with one pass. Seven and a half with one pass. I apologies about Home Alone. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I said I can't accept it. You go, single? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what, what things are Kevin McAllister when he is Home Alone? <laughs> single, yes. Okay. okay. So that leaves us with Loracus and Hill, Mobs as Ace Attorney at Law, any association with, organ uh, with organised crime are purely coincidental wink face. You only have question A, uh, set A to use. So decide your speak, uh, your answer order. Oh, you want to go oh first? God. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Go ahead. Okay, so Steph is going first. Die following second. Your questions are on the top 10 funniest Disney characters. Oh, God. <laughs> no. I knew all the musical ones. I'm not going to know these. Same, same. Ah. I know you might know them because, like I said, it's not necessarily a film question. So we'll see. So Steph going first, yeah? Okay. Okay. Your time starts now. Steph, responsible for the terms Dingle Hopper and Snarf Blat, what is the name of the seagull in The Little Mermaid who provides Ariel with items from the human world? Damn it. No. <laughs> That's a pass. Die. A word that can follow cross and back and is also the name of a title Disney character, what would you require if you were to fall out of a tree and cut open your leg? Stitch. Correct. Steph, the name of the robot from Disney's adaptation of Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island, what name links a brand of rice, a cartoon about a boy who can transform into aliens, and a famous landmark in London? I think I'm having a stroke. Uh, pass. Die. The two main mice that help out Cinderella in her life, as well as her attempts to escape from Lady Tremaine's entrapment of her, with one wearing an orange jacket and red cap, and the other a little top and green cap, what are the names of the mice? Oh, I've never even seen the film. Um, Lilo and Stitch. Jacques and Gus. Steph, in The Jungle Book, which character is famous for cross-dressing in flowers, leaves, and coconuts to disguise themselves as an orangutan, as well as their life mo motto of The Bare Necessities? Hello. Correct. Die. Who is the king of the underworld and god of death as depicted in Greek mythology? Hades. Correct. Steph. Which character from Disney's animated film Mulan shares their name with a style of preparing pork? What? <laughs> Say that again? Which character from Disney's animated film Mulan shares their name with a style of preparing pork? I'm stuck. What is it? Cricket? Mushu. Mushu? Mushu? Die. 
A TV show based off of a limited number of characters from Disney's The Lion King was first aired in 1995. Which characters were the primary focus and the title characters of that show? Oh, I guess Timon and Pumbaa? Correct. Steph, voiced by Patrick Warburton, which character from The Emperor's New Groove was received so popularly that they received a spin-off sequel film with their name replacing The Emperor's? Gronk? Correct. Die. According to ancient lore and a variety of stories from the Middle East, who is meant to appear if you were to rub a lamp in order to grant you an arbitrary number of wishes? The genie. Correct. Okay, so... so the ring we'll go... the actual original story. So we'll go to your passes. So the, the name of the seagull was Scuttle. The name that, uh, the name that links the robot from uh, Treasure Planet, uh, the brand of Rise, a cartoon boy, and the landmark in London is Ben. Big I, I see Dai was like, his hat. do you know that one? He looked frustrated. Yeah. You're like, no. <laughs> yeah, so David, how did they get on? Uh, they had six points. So, so close in that round. I so, could... just so just to check. So, so in uh, that... They had six, so Nia and James with seven, and then Dan <clears throat> and Joe with seven and a half. Okay, here we go then. So... Oh. <laughs> Okay, so we have the final scores. Oh, this is close. This is really, really close. <laughs> so I will say there's absolutely no shame to anyone for your performances today. They were fantastic. Yeah. So in third place with 10 points, we have Quizendale. Hey. Good effort, guys. <laughs> in second place and missing off the top spot by a single point. Oh, Ooh. so with 12 points, it's the Phantom Freds. Oh, oh. oh. so close. Well Which done, means... Joe. Well done, Joe. Well Which... done, Dan. Well done, mate. Which means in first place, with 13 points, and I hope I never get to say this name again, it's Floracus and Hill, Mobsters Ace Attorney at Law, Any Associations with Organised Crime, and a Purely Coincidental Wink Face. Yeah, I'm walking here. I'm walking. <laughs> So you are the So you are the ultimate champions of the very first full on endgame. How does it feel? It feels a little accomplishment. Yeah, I've got something to admit. Um we are entirely associated with the mob. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well now is a bad time to tell us. Okay. Where's where's this prize going to? <laughs> I feel bad because one of the one of the prizes is technically money. Um <laughs> Okay, so and your, your prize, prize is a horse's head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the prize is for the winners. So both of you will receive. So one of the things we want to do is basically support cinema when it's uh, when it's in a position to basically come back fully. So one of the things that both members of the of the team will receive is a uh, is a ten pound gift voucher for a cinema of your choice to spend on whatever you want within that cinema. That is our way of trying to siphon money away from the mob. <laughs> but the other thing we want to offer is obviously we have the movie vault in, in which we encapsulate uh, films for all time so we are giving you the opportunity to basically choose a movie that instantly goes into the vault no questions asked um, David would you like them to give it to us now or give it to us and we announce it in the next episode yeah ha have a think guys and we'll go through uh, everyone's uh, plugs and goodbyes etc so we can uh, wrap it up for today yeah, so let's let our guests advertise themselves. So we'll go to Dan and Joe first. Where can we find you guys? Find us in the pub! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm done with the Cockney references now, East Enders. Um, yeah, thank you guys for you having us. You can find us on the East Enders podcast. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, no, thank you. It's been a really great episode. It was lovely to meet everyone and um, it was a lot of fun. But yeah, you can find us at the Danjo Film Show. We're on Mixcloud, uh, on Anchor, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, basically everywhere. Um, and you can follow us on Facebook uh, under the Danjo Film Show. And we're also on Twitter and Instagram uh, at DJ Film Show. And Dan, did you, you recently watched, reviewed Mulan. I wanted to know whether you watched Mulan. 
did you watch Mulan? You were so against Mulan, and then I saw it on your episode, and I was like, mm, did Dan watch Mulan? Did he rent Mulan? <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say right now because uh, I've got uh, legal obligations. Um, <laughs> but if you, if you want to know, listen to the podcast. Uh, we did watch it uh, in some kind of way. We struck a deal. We struck a deal. We struck a deal reluctantly. Dan and signed, I, signed a deal with the devil. He, I did. He didn't, want, he didn't want the mouse to get his yeah. money. But yeah, so yeah, we, we did do that. It was very reluctant. Um, but yeah, obviously, cinema is number one as always. And uh, yes, go see Tenet. <laughs> yeah. N- Nia will be with you guys. She was on the episode of Don't Sign Up to Disney Plus. So that's even more money than the subscription. So very good, Nia. Very good. All right, speaking of which, we'll move over to uh, Nia and James. Where can we find the both of you? First of all, thank you again for having me back. It was super fun. Um, no but worries. you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at aloofness. Check her out. Great Thanks animation you. stuff. Hopefully we get that news soon about what you've been working on. <laughs> yeah, I so. genuinely can't wait. Yeah. I think you guys will like it. Hey, you can find me at uh, jamesgaymusic.com. That's G-A-I-R. And then the usual places, Instagram, Facebook, all that kind of gear. Awesome. Excellent. And finally, to the champions of the episode, where can we find you? And also, what films do you want to put in? Uh, well, thank you very much. It was great to have a victory during the lockdown. <laughs> uh, you can find me on all my social media. Uh, on Twitter at uh, SYFlorakis, on my Instagram, Stephen Lee Florak, and on my letterbox, just press 7 Florak. you can find me. Um... I want to say my film last. Okay. Okay. Uh, honestly, thank you again. Um, I think we ought to organise to go to the cinema together, you know, and share the thing when we're whenever we're able to. Yes, it would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be good. I'm not very fine of it online. I don't have Twitter or Instagram, so um, I don't have a podcast. So I'll probably just listen. I'll probably be back here at some point. Yeah, listen to Dai's previous episodes where he's talking about Frankenstein and the Invisible Woman, which was <laughs> a fun experience. Don't lock women in cupboards. <laughs> oh, yeah. When's your book out? When's your book? <laughs> yeah, Stefanos, what's our um, entry to the film vault then? Adam Thread. Oh, God. Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! Come oh, on. brilliant. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> Well done. Oh. Dan and Joe were like, well, we might not have won, but we still got the prize we wanted. This anyway. is better than winning. <laughs> this is in Craig's face right now. This is better I, than lit- I literally regret doing this. Oh. Like, <laughs> that single move has made me really annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> like, I literally have a poster next to my desk. Yeah. And that's why I move places so you won't be angry. Yeah. <laughs> I, you sat in front of it the other day when me died. Steph had a call and i was like you might not want to sit in front of that poster when you <laughs> fantastic that that is the best possible outcome <laughs> i could have thought of to be honest well all that's done now has inspired me to come up with even more devilish games for you all in the future <laughs> <laughs> so going into the movie vault this week then is phantom thread chuck it in there Greg. <laughs> Yeah, well, thank you, everyone. Uh, once again, lots of fun. Great seeing you all again. It's a great chance to see multiple people at once. And, of course, like I said, you can catch them all at the places they advertise. And you can catch us at Well Good Movies on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can also catch us on freshtakehub.com slash wellgoodmovies. So please go check out the episodes in which the uh, contestants were previously on. So there's lots of fun stuff on there. You hear that highlight clip of uh, what you heard in previous Endgames. I uh, hope you guys had fun with that. And, uh, yeah, you can check out the full games in full uh, by checking it out. And, yeah, we got some fun stuff coming up in the future. And uh, hopefully, yeah, like I said, you guys are all open to come back and uh, revisit with some new topics and new films to discuss. Uh, I think our next episode is talking about Titanic, the animated. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, yes, uh, obviously, we look forward to all having you back on soon. And, uh, yeah, we hope everyone at home enjoyed this. And hopefully in the future we'll have another end game special. Uh, which will gather together some more teams again, see how it goes. So thank you very much, guys, and uh, we'll catch you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 here.
We haven't told you, but there are prizes. Oh. <laughs> what prizes? Uh, we'll tell you at the end. Oh, Wait, okay. Craig, is it, is it a date with you? Because I'll be winning that. <laughs> um, What's poppin'? What's poppin'? 